the greatest ni'mah is Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us the opportunity to acknowledge His Lordship over us. To say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the greatest ni'mah after khalq, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honoring us with creation, creating us. But if we are ungrateful, if we don't acknowledge, then it is not an honor. It becomes That person becomes a trial for him to be in existence and not to accept his Lord, that he will be in bad ending. So Islam, alhamdulillah, dak alhamdulillah rabbi ala ni'mati islam for Mashaykh, they taught us to say uh, shukr and hamd daily. And one of the things is alhamdulillah, to say 500 times alhamdulillah for that you have created me and made me Muslim. Uh, and you didn't make me something following another wrong understanding. So, and the greatest ni'mah of being Muslim is connected to the one for whose sake Allah created this creation, Sayyidina Muhammad Because in him, Islam, the perfection of Islam is manifest in him. Salawatu Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Guidance is perfected for him. The opportunity to draw near to Allah is perfected. Salawatu Rabbi Wasallam And because of that, we also have that opportunity. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went on Isra and Mi'raj in this holy month of Rajab, drew nearer to his Lord, Qaba Qawsayni Aw Adna. No one understands that statement, it's only a symbol pointing to nearness. Allah also left it open. He says, Qaba Qawsayni, two bows length. What is two bows length? Who knows what two bows length? Aw Adna. Or near, how near, how much, it's open, it's mutlaqa. Means when it comes to Prophet وسلم, as the perfect abd and his connection to his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no, no understanding that can yuhid, no ability to imagine what that connection and that uns and that nearness and that relationship between Allah and his Prophet. No mind. No one can, can attempt to understand that. But it is for us an indication is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is al-Mustafa, that he is al-Mushtaba by his Lord, that he is the one whom Allah loves, he is Habibullah, that he is most beloved, most honored, most acceptable, most highly regarded by Lord of creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Isra and Mi'raj, as we said last night from our ulama, is nothing but a, a procession and an invitation to uh, visit all the different awalim, universes and dimensions to not to for Prophet to go and see them as a tourist because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ma zaga al -basaru wa ma taga. that the, his eyesight was never wavering he was never looking left and right he was oh, never looking salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi oh what is this uh, this great creation of Allah even ulama said that when he came back from Isra and Mi'raj and the Qurayshis who didn't believe in him said or oh, you went and came in one night. He didn't even tell them about Mi'raj. He just told them about Isra Allah. from <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to Jerusalem. That's it. He said, you went there and we take us 30 days beating our camels to get there. And you went there last night and came back and you're now here talking to us. Abu Jahl Ali, my Belittling. And then he's thinking he's smart. He's so prophet said. He said, yes. He says, okay. He didn't say anything to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like to call, accusing him of anything. He, said, he says, if I told your people, would you tell them what you told me? Like when you treat somebody as if they're 
crazy. It's like, oh, let me get your people. Can you tell them the same thing you told me? He said, okay, get them. Allah. And Prophet ﷺ told them. And so oh, they started to belittle him, making noises, laughing at him, some even putting their heads on, uh, hands on, on his head and so forth. And then they asked, they were asking him, if you've never been to Jerusalem, describe for us Baitul Maqdis. Show it, tell us how, how it is, so we know. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu in the Hadith, he said that I started to speak, but then some aspects of it were, were not clear to me. Because of Prophet Sallallahu who was never cured, was not going, was not a tourist. He was not going to tour the Baytul Maqdis. He was invited to his Lord's presence. And his, his, his full hudur and attention was with his Lord, not with, with, with the dunya. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Baytul Maqdis in its entirety Allah. in front of him. And the whole uh, Baytul Maqdis was, was in front of him. And whatever he wanted to, to describe something, it was for him. There. Even in one of the hadith says, and landed it in a spot, Bani Uqayt. The whole Baytul Maqdis, Allah brought it for him. But the point is that the reason why Prophet Sallallahu wasn't, he was not looking at anything. He was invited to his Lord's presence, Allah. What was he looking for? To be with his Lord. He was looking to his Lord's presence. He was never out of his Lord's presence. Ma'arij, Prophet Sallallahu he says, I, I have one hour with my Lord, one hour with creation. Mawlana Shaykh Nazim used to say, the presence of Prophet in dunya is only one ray from his reality. Hmm. His reality is in Allah's presence. May Allah give us understanding. Sallu ala nabi in this day and in this month, inshallah, the month of Shaban is coming. Make too much salawat on him. Sallallahu alayhi wa And this dunya is, is quickly inshallah finishing and all the signs we are witnessing of zulm, of killing, of kufr, of satanism, de demonic behavior, uh, animal behavior that human beings are engaged in are all nothing but signs for us that the end is near. May Allah bring Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam. Amen. Grant us to be with him. Inshallah, grant us Husnul Khatima. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa 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 alayhi w